Good day everybody, my name is Adrian Raptor and I welcome you to a new video because today we are going to have a look at the Steel Hunter game mode. I know my microphone is not that good, I'm sorry, I'm at a friend's place and I'm just doing this out of nowhere. I can't even really edit that video, not like I would do it anyway. Um, but, well, I have to improvise a little bit because tomorrow I'm taking the Intercity Express train to... Düsseldorf, which is 30 minutes away from Köln, and the next four days I'll be at the Gamescom. So yeah, but for the people which are wanting to know, yes, I'm around five hours away from home with strains. So yeah, that's why this. So I think the first thing we can do is have a look at the video what which Wargaming is showing us about the Steel the Hunters game anymore. mode. The world isn't the same anymore. It's every man for himself now. So basically, World of Tanks and And by the way, that sound guy is super edgy. And today, the world is super dark. Nobody pretends they're noble. They only think about personal gain. Hey, that's that's generally how World of Tanks randoms work. Everybody gives it no shit about anybody. They only want to have their own good W and rating. Explore the dreamland if you want to live. Grab everything in sight. Don't let them take your spoils of war. Okay. Become stronger and more dangerous. That looks really interesting how this works, because sadly there's not a whole lot of information about this level up system yet. But again, Use look for an opportunity to outsmart your enemy. Because look at that, this is base it looks like this is a T44 hull with a LTTB turret and a M6 M62 gun, or basically the gun of an IS4. Looks super weird. The main room dominate or be dominated that's it looks like uh i don't know maybe a whole like the pershing with an m103 turret super weird such is the new order and you can even see it here we have here a, a panther hole with a vkp turret with the howitzer gun here we have a t43 hole with a t1010 turret and i don't know what gun this is and this looks like the t25-2 hole with the m6 turret and some 76 millimeter gun anyway this is not the first time we are having a look at the steel or uh, battle royale mode in world of tanks and i have to say i already had a look at this way back in the game and my goodness gracious this was absolute fun like it was buggy as hell don't get me wrong but it was genuinely fun and a really, really cool mode. Because there you could also get some power-ups, which we sadly do not have anymore. But they had the core mechanics are the same, like the, the, the side cone and the fact that you can't really see people which are left from you and you have to have them in your side. Like right now, you can only see them if they're in your side cone. And the traces are much more visible, which I think is a super cool touch. And obviously you can't see like the numbers over their head only when you're aiming at the people. So I do hope that this is going to be part of it. And I know, yes, you could say, yeah, it's Fortnite and it's Battle Royale. It's something which is way too old again. But then again, please do not forget this mode can be just fun. It doesn't have to be grindy as hell. Well, we also already said that about the home front, but then it was super grindy as hell. The good thing is, Wargaming didn't really said anything about making money out of this game mode. It looks like it's a pure fun game mode. So yeah, the first thing which is super interesting is 20 players, and or when you choose to fight solo, or it's three play, seven three player platoons and then it's 21 players, which is a downsizing from 40 players. It might also be that the map is much, much smaller. But yeah, then again, this looks interesting because it's, again, it's you versus 19 others. And what I still didn't understand yet is um, how are the winning conditions? Because he says here, if you prefer, you can just loot treasure without engaging with your enemies. The choice of tactic is yours. But remember, only one commander or victorious platoon will be left standing when the battle ends. So when you loot treasure, do you like also get a win condition or something? I guess it means with this treasure that you get just things like, I don't know, you just get better tanks. But yeah, during the event, you have three different types, USA, which we already said, uh, the USSR and the German tanks. And apparently in the game, um, you can um, get upgrades on those tanks from tier one to tier eight. And 
This is also something which I don't really understand it. You can earn battle XP for those upgrades by looting treasure, destroying and damaging enemies. But again, I'm not entirely sure, do those upgrades stay or does it constantly every single time you start from new that they, um, a new game, that they all vanish again, which, which would make sense to me, you know, because it would be super unfair for somebody being at tier 8 already or tier 8 equipment while the others are like tier 1. It would really be super, super bad. And... I think it, I hope at least it is the same as it is here, where everybody starts with their standard tank and then they can find some upgrade positions while, where in this game mode, you could drive into one of those zones and then after 10 seconds, you would get your new tank. I'm just searching the scene where I had that. Yeah, here you can see 432 capturing the T100 LT and suddenly I changed from the T49 to a T100 LT. But apparently this will be a little bit different in the Steel Hunter mode from it looks like. And you can see there are loot and airdrops. One of your main tasks is to collect loot, special objectives that periodically spawn on the map in predetermined areas. I hope that there are a lot of those areas, so you don't just like, I don't know, remember all of them. That would be sad. They give you a great advantage or your adversities and speed up your game progression. Again, I don't know what is this progression meant, like just for the game or in general over the whole game mode. Anyway, you can also get the airdrops, which give you much better loot. And yeah, in those loots, apparently you get things like the consumables and abilities, I guess. Like that would make sense to me. And you got things like turbocharger, which make you faster. You get um, restore a fixed amount of HP. Um, target tracking, which makes increased aim speed, gun stabilization, other combat parameters. So basically this thing over here or some of those things. A large repair kit, please. Because that is something which killed me in this game because I had no chance to repair. Something like a trap, which sounds really interesting. An airstrike, a recovery zone and the smoke screen, which we already saw in a game. And the abilities will be super interesting when you play in Platoon. Like, I'm looking forward to grind or playing this game mode with my friends just for fun, because it's a free player game mode. Which is... <laughs> Say hi. hi! No, show you my hand. Like, see, this is the guy I'm here. Hi! So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a friend of mine which wants to play the mode. And I think it's super fun because here you can also learn some basics of the game without being under pressure of, oh, I'm going to lose credits and something. Yes, some of those things are a little bit different, like the radio detection mechanic, which is an exclusive technical mechanic displaying stationary loop points as well as enemy tanks on the minimap. It is activated manually using XQ. Be aware, uh, beware, using radar detection will instantly reveal your current position on the minimap of time of activation to so all players within the detective radius too. That sounds super interesting. It's like, I am giving you infos for you giving me infos. The only thing is, you really got to keep in mind that you're not getting fucked by this. <laughs> uh, so you're not like constantly having this on. Um, and yes, your position isn't isn't updated over time. It is visible to opponents only at the time of activation. The detection radius depends on your vehicle's starting characteristics and the choice of modules at, in the research process. So use radio detection wisely and plan your acti actions a few paces ahead. So again, this sounds interesting, but again, I'm slightly scared that um, you won't lose progression during the game. Like, for example, you start with tier 1, then suddenly you're tier 3, then tier 5, and tier 8 at the end. And this could make really, really imbalanced things. I hope they didn't do that. Anyway, the vision and aim mechanics are also very, very cool. They're, they're the same as in this game mode. And again, they are really cool, in my opinion, because they definitely help you be more skilled. You have this vision cone. In front of this vision cone, you will spot the people. Other than that, only if they're getting close to you. And... Just like um, how it is usually. And the other thing is that they won't be shown, they only will be shown on the mini-map and you have to aim at them to be to get them to see. So this is super cool. And in my opinion. And lastly, you get rank and rewards. Climb through 25 ranks to progress and earn increasingly attractive rewards, including a, um, a decal, two unique 3D, 2D styles, credits, bonds, medals, badges, and days of what premium account. So I guess the um, badges, this like, this, I don't know, wolf paw or something for the furries under you um but other than that i don't mind like again i'm not seeing anything like it was with homefront where you get quicker and easier towards those things and it looks like it's genuinely just a fun game mode because i'm probably not there is nothing in here which is super i have to need it probably bonds that's about it 
but the rest is it's nice to have for me at least i don't know how it is for you i guess for newer players or for free-to-play players it's much more important to get the days of premium count or this unique 3d 2d styles because well you don't have to waste credits or um, gold on it anyway i i hope I genuinely hope that this game mode has a lot of um, it has a lot of potential just from reading this, and I hope it is fun. And I hope again that there is no progression system in that kind of sense that the vehicles will keep being strong or keep being tier eight, whatever, until like for the rest of the game because that would be super sad. And I also want to know how exactly this rank and reward system works because if it is again super grindy, I have to say why implement why implement a ranks and reward system in the first place? This is a fun mode. So why? Genuinely why? Anyway, again, I think this game mode has huge. It's huge. It can work incredibly well. It has, uh, Wargaming can do so much with this game mode, like even maybe make it a, a, a standalone game mode where you can, like in Fortnite, buy skins for your tanks, make them more cool looking or special looking, make them unique looking. And again, I don't mind. This is good monetization, my opinion. But again, what do you think about the Steel Hunter game mode? Do you look forward to it? Do you think it's, again, it's copy paste of Battlefield 5? of Fortnite, of PUBG, etc, etc, or does it have a future in World of Tanks? My name is Raging Raptor, thank you for bearing with me with my meh microphone and the meh setup, but yeah, we have to improvise. That's what an engineer does, improvise. <laughs> thank you so much, and I hope to see some of you at the Gamescom. If so, just talk to me, just say hello, make some handshake, make a selfie, I don't care. Cheers, guys. And I have to stop now.